Welcome to WinTech 4.0 Civilian Tools and Functions. The Windows Team Awareness Kit is a government off-the-shelf software application for Windows devices. The software consists of an interactive map display, integrating imagery, and overlay information. WinTech provides enhanced collaboration and situational awareness over a tactical network. When you first launch your WinTech, you're going to see this GUI here, a graphic user interface. At the top is your toolbar. Across there, you have multiple tabs that contain different tools for each tab. Go below the toolbar, you have your map interface, your map area. You may hear me refer to this as a common operational picture or SA display area. At the very bottom, you have your notification panel. On the left, you're going to notice the grid changes as you move the cursor across the map area. On the far right, you'll see TAC network status. That's a shortcut to your TAC server. To the left of that, you'll see notifications pop up. At the very top, you have a yellow flag. If you have alerts, you can left click on that to drop down all your alerts and list format. During this presentation, I may pause briefly for you to pull up your own WinTAC and follow along with what we've just taught you. Let's move down to the map area first. And we want to look in the lower right hand corner to our user location information, our ULI box. You may also hear this referred to as PLI, position location information. We want to place our self marker on the map. Let's left click on the ULI box. And then we're going to place you on the map by left clicking on the map. If you don't know where you exactly are right now, it's not a big deal. You can place yourself anywhere on the map for the purpose of this class. Once you place your self marker, it's going to look like a blue Chevron style symbol or a Star Trek symbol. And you're going to notice on your ULI box that your information has changed in there. You may still have no GPS in red. That's because your laptop doesn't have internal GPS built into it or an external source. If you're on a tablet or laptop that has that, you will not see the no GPS in red. Call sign will be displayed, 10 digit grid, elevation, and heading for your self marker. This time I want you to take your cursor up to your self marker. I want you to right click on your self marker and it's gonna allow you to adjust the position of your marker. And that's a quick way to move your marker to fine tune your just uh, self if you need to. Now, once you go off to the map area, left click and hold on the map and pan your map north, east, south, and west. Once you've panned away from your self marker, go ahead and left click on your PLI box, and that's going to recenter your self marker in the center of your screen. That's a quick way to find yourself if you're working away from your location. Next, I want you to right click and hold on the map area. And this will rotate your map to a different heading. So if you want a different perspective of your map, this is a quick way to do that. If you want to go back to the north up view, simply go over to the compass in the upper left hand corner or also the north seeking arrow, left click on it. And that will take your map back to the north up view. Just below your north seeking arrow is your plus and minus and zoom scale. So zoom in and zoom out, and as you do so, look in the lower left-hand corner, that's your map scale. It'll tell you what level of zoom you're at. Just below your map scale is your 3D function. This will take you from overhead view to street level view. This uh, view will look better for you on different maps that you have pulled up. So take some time, go ahead, place yourself marker in different locations, pan around your map, see your area, practice with the 3D functionality. Now we're going to move to the self marker itself. Most objects that you drop on the map are going to have a radial menu. So if you left click on the object, this being your self marker, you're going to see a radial menu come up. Each radial menu has a unique set of tools to it. And we'll talk about these radial menus as we come to different objects. The very top in your 12 o'clock position, you have a pairing line. Left click on the pairing line and this will pair your self marker to any object or area of the map you uh, click on. Range of bearing line is generated anywhere your self marker moves now that range of bearing line will stay paired to that object that you paired it to left click in the center of the range of bearing line. And the radial menu comes up for that range of bearing line. We'll talk about range of bearing later on in the class for now we're just going to delete or trash this range of bearing line at the six o'clock position left click on the trash can. We're going to be deleting a lot of the stuff we drop early on here because we don't want to clutter up the map display. Later on, we'll save it and form everything into a data package. Let's go back to the radio menu. To the right, you see a lock and it looks like birds in flight. 
the lock is going to lock the self marker into the center no matter where the map pans. It works in conjunction with the lock view up in the upper left hand corner of the toolbar. Below it, the birds in flight, that's your track history or breadcrumbs. This uh, functions off GPS. So anywhere you move, you'll be able to see a track form behind you. Later on, you can go into track history and pull up old tracks, turn them into routes, send them to your buddies in case you want them to follow the same route as you. Right now, these functions are grayed out because we do not have internal GPS. If you're on a tablet, these functions will probably be available to you. At the six o'clock position, you have details. This will be a common one you see on most radio menus. Left click on details. Most pages form to the right of the screen with the exception of Overlay Manager. When your details page comes up and a panel on the right side of the screen, you can go up to the very top in the blue and grab and hold and drag it anywhere on the map that you desire. To redock it to the right, grab it to the right, release it. If it doesn't dock all the way, drop the arrow down and hit dock. Next to that, you see a pin. This is how you turn this panel into a tab. You'll see a tab forms on the right side, so you can easily open and hide this panel if you want to leave it up. For now, we're going to look down to where your call sign is. This call sign can be changed later on when we get into settings. Off to the right, you're going to see four lines coming into a dot. This is a uh, center on function, so if you're away from your self marker or any other object that has this function on it, you can quickly center on that object. Move down, you'll see your road, your node type, battery life. Battery life is very important for ATAC SIV devices out in the sector. If you see that some of your personnel are running low on battery life, you know you need to get a power management plan in place. You have your 10 digit grid to your self marker. To the right, you have a copy function. This copy function will copy that grid to a clipboard and allow you to paste it in message format quickly. For now though, we're gonna move up to the top and we're gonna close out this panel hitting the X. Go back to our radio menu. To the left of the details page, you have a polar plot. This will allow you to enter in polar coordinates or distance and direction and plot a range of bearing line and a marker. Let's left click on the polar plot. At the top, you're gonna to see the markers that we can drop. We won't worry about dropping markers during this class. Below it, we're gonna enter bearing. Since we're operating in degrees, we're gonna keep it below 360 and a range around three or 400 meters. You can interact with the degrees and trues and meters and change them to different units of measure if you desire. You can also slew to or auto zoom whenever you drop this range of bearing line. To the right, you're going to see place point. If you open that menu up, we don't want to place a point, but we do want to create a range of bearing line. So we're going to left click on create range of bearing line. And we're going to left click in the bottom left for create range of bearing line again. Range of bearing line is generated. We're going to click in the center. And we're going to go down and hit the trash can to take this off the screen. The last position on the radio menu of your self marker is your fine tune adjustment. We've learned how to right click on our self marker, but you can also go into the radio menu and do uh, more minor adjustments. When you click on fine tune, it's going to zoom in a little bit so you can more accurately, accurately place yourself. This time, go ahead and take a moment to work with your uh, self marker radio menu, and then we're going to talk about our buddy icon. We're going to go ahead and move up to where we see FSR Joe on his S9. That's an ATAC SIV device. We're going to left click on that buddy icon and open up its radio menu. That is also how your self marker will appear on your buddy's devices is that circle with the information inside of it. At the top, you see your lock on self again. However, this is going to lock on FSR Joe. So no matter where FSR Joe goes on the screen, the map will follow him and keep him in the center of the GUI there. To the right, you have a profile card. Anytime you see that arrow out to the right, that means you have additional options. On this one, it's a chat function for attack chat and contacts tool. We want to go into Joe's details page just below that. And we're going to left click to open it up. See Joe's call sign, his pertinent information, his grid. And then again, you see his battery lack, so I can track how, well, how much battery charge he has there. Go ahead and close this panel out. And that completes self markers. We want to move up to the toolbar now. And we're going to start in the very upper left hand corner above lock view with our additional options menu. This contains administrative tools that you can interact with or, or read. Support, if we highlight it. 
Additional menu will come off to the right. The most important thing in here for you is at the very bottom, WinTAC user manual. Later on, if you're working with WinTAC and you want the functionality of the tool, you can go in here and read up on it. And we'll close this out. For now, every time we close something out, we're going to go back to the additional options menu and open it up and go to the next tool in the section, About. About's going to bring up your license and your software version. This is important to you because if someone's troubleshooting your device long distance, they may ask you what version of WinTAC you're operating off of. This is where you can find it to tell them. Go ahead and close out. Import Manager will allow you to import files and certificates for the functionality of WinTAC. Below it, you have Cloud FTP or File Transfer Protocol. This will allow you to add additional servers to draw data from. Plugin Manager is where you'll go to manage your plugins. You'll see that we have all of them loaded except for the Cotton Spectre at the very bottom. So you can load and unload the plugins as you need them. Close this out. Below Plugin Manager, you have Toolbar Manager. You may have already noticed that our toolbar looks a little different from what you see in front of you. We've, took, we've taken off all the tools that we're not going to cover in today's class. Later on, you can customize your toolbars. You see you need to use it. Settings. Left-click on Settings to open up the panel on the right. Once you open up Settings, you're going to see My Preferences at the top. Go ahead and left-click on My Preferences. And we're going to adjust your call sign, display type, team, all that information you're seeing on the details page. And this is going to be based off your unit SOP. As we go through this, we'll bring up Watchtower and a Word document that has your call sign format in it. So everyone can set up their WinTAC and personalize it to themselves. So let's left click on my call sign. Here you see our format that we use for our call signs. And Al, if you can go and bring up the Word document so they can see theirs, this is what I want you to enter in. State, unit for National Guard, and then unit, warfighter function, name. Example at the bottom is Virginia National Guard 136 Ops, last name of Doe. We'll leave this up here for you for a moment. And now let's minimize. Once you've entered your call sign in, select OK. We'll be selecting cancel since all of our information has already been entered in. My display type, the description that best fits us is ground troop. Look through the menu and find the description that best fits you. Click OK. My team, this will drop down a color palette and you'll select what uh, color identifier that you're rolling for your unit. Now, if you'll bring up Watchtower, we'll open up that SOP for you. Under the Windows tab, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And this is on your Watchtower website. And off to the right where it says call signs, this call sign SOP has changed. That's why we brought up the Word document for you, but the colors are the same still. If you cannot find your unit on here, they're pretty good about updating Watchtower. It may show up in a few days. Okay, if we can close out this tab and minimize Watchtower. We move down to My Role. Headquarters is where we're attached to support your training. Yours may be team member or team lead. Pick the description that best fits your role. Two other areas that we want to go to for troubleshooting purposes on this panel is GPS preferences and reporting preferences. Left click on GPS preferences. You notice we have ours turned off because we do not have internal GPS on our laptop. However, left click on it, you can go in and find what description best fits your device. Click OK, hit the back arrow one time. Anytime I talk about the back arrow, it's up in the upper left hand corner. Next is reporting preferences. If your buddy's saying they can't see you on their map display, one thing you should check on your end is make sure you have your location over network turned on. So if this has been accidentally deselected, let's check it back. 
or maybe sometimes you want to refresh it so you'll turn it off and turn it back on let's hit the back arrow twice and we're going to go down to display preferences we're going to talk about one button inside of this panel and that's at the very top unit display format preferences As you open this up, you'll notice the very top on court display, we have our set on MGRS. As you go through, you can change bearing units, range units. Take time to scroll through here and see how you can change the measurement systems that best fit your needs. Persistent back twice. And we're gonna come down to network preferences. This is where we're gonna go in, set up our tax server, use the contacts tool and tax chat. Left click on network preferences. And at the top, you see manage server connections. That's the shortcut I was telling you about at the bottom right at the beginning of class. If you go down to the bottom right and left click on tap network status, it will bring you to this page here. Left click on server connections. We already have a server set up for us to train off of. You may only see add stream there because we're going to set up your server for you now. So left click on add stream and this is what you'll see. We're going to cancel this page out because we already have all the information on our other server. So we're going to hit cancel here and we're going to go up to our edit function with the pencil next to our server. At the very top, this is a description according to Watchtower Crosstalk JTF server. On the left below it, protocol SSL for secure socket layer. So what you want selected to the right is your host address. That's for your server address. The first two letters are the state abbreviation. We're using New Jersey, November Juliet. And then dot crosstalk.com. Off to the right, your port number will always be 8089. Then your certificates, enroll for client certificates. Check that box. Skip the next two buttons and go down to use authentication. Make sure that box is checked. And then you'll enter in your username and password for Watchtower. If you do not have a username and password set up for Watchtower yet, you will not be able to connect to a tax server. We'll leave this up, then we want to bring up the Watchtower. And we're going to show you if later on you need to set up a tax server on your own where you can find it. At the very top of Watchtower, we go to Guide. We'll have to log back in real quick. And we'll go back up to guide. At the very bottom, you're going to see how to install WinTech and configure tax server in WinTech. Left click on it, and then you'll scroll down. And it's going to take you through all the steps myself and now just took you through. Okay, let's minimize Watchtower. This time, if you entered in all your server information, Click OK. At the bottom, you'll notice the uh, notification panel is going to tell you the status of uploading your certificates into the server. You'll get another pop up box on the left. Click OK on it. And it'll have your username and password in it as well. And then you'll see this screen here, except your cloud will probably be red at first. Give it 20 to 30 seconds for it to turn green. If it doesn't, reinitiate it by unclicking the check mark there on the right and then click it again. And it'll reinitiate the process and a quick troubleshooting step you can do on your end. If you can't get your server up right now, it's not a big deal. It won't interfere with uh, the rest of the class. We're going to go ahead and we're going to close out this box up in the upper right hand corner. And we're going to go to contacts. Now that we have the server up and running, we're going to see what contacts are available to us. Left click on the contacts tools represented by three people standing together on the toolbar. These are all the contacts we have available to us right now. If we look at the very top left corner, we see A to Z. That's how I'm organizing my contacts right now in alphabetical order. I left click it one time. It's who's on the network. So let's left click again. And off to the left and right, you'll see a plus and minus sign with a group of people. This is how you add groups. If you ever see an icon with one person with a plus and minus, that's just how you add or take away individuals. We're going to add a group, so left click on groups. 
and we're going to name this group and we'll name it test one. Naming conventions are very important in WinTech. However, we'll keep our naming convention simple for the class. We're going to add some people to it. We're going to use FSR Joe. And we can add Rob as well. And we're going to click OK. Now that group has been created, we go up below all chat rooms to groups, extend it. And we see our group of test one. We left click on test one. And now we'll be able to send a message to all those people in the group all at once. At the very bottom of the message panel, you see stored or canned messages. These are quick send messages that you can create to send out to uh, a chat contact. We're going to left click on Roger. And you'll notice that the full word Roger shows up. We hit send. And then just below send, we can cycle through all the different uh, menus by selecting mode. And we're going to keep cycling through until LZ comes back around in the bottom right hand corner. And then we're going to right click on this button and change it. This is how you customize your buttons for quick send messages that you want to uh, personalize. We're going to change this from LZ to PZ. Click OK. And now you'll see PZ shows up as a quick send button for you. If we left click on that and hit send, that's the message that will go out. Now we're going to hit the back arrow and we're going to allow Joe to respond to the message we just sent out. I want you to look up in the upper left hand corner. You'll see a red one show up in contacts and to the right of test one, you'll see that the message showed up there, allowing you to know who sent you the message. If we go ahead and open up test one, we'll see the message that Joe sent. And you notice the number one goes away in contacts once you check the message. All right, let's hit the back arrow one time. Now we're going to scroll down and we're going to look at our contacts. We'll scroll down till we find Joe. And we found Joe here. If we look off to the left, we'll see another profile card. If you left click on that profile card to the left of Joe's name, it'll bring up his details page again for you. Another way to get to his detail page information or to center on his location. Go ahead and close this window out. And if we look to the right of Joe, you're going to see an X. It looks like a top heavy X. That's for tech chat. We'll set that up momentarily, but we want to use GeoChat. So go off to the right, drop down, and select GeoChat. And now you can send Joe a message through GeoChat. But for now, we're going to close out the contacts tool. So we'll go ahead and hit the X up in the top, and we're going to go in and we're going to set up TAC Chat. TAC Chat has a two-part button. You have the top just for sending messages real quick, and then you have TAC Chat functions or settings below that. That's where we're going first. So drop down the arrow, go all the way to the bottom, and select settings. Over to the right, chat credentials is where we want to go into. It's the second option. Left click. Here's a little bit different. You're going to enter in your watchtower username and then add at crosstalk.com, just like Al has it there. Then it'll be your password for watchtower. Once this is entered in, you will select OK. We'll select cancel since ours is already set up. Once you click OK, you'll notice the notification panel run across. And then we're going to wait for a red gumball or a green gumball to appear up in tech chat. If this does not happen, we're going to go ahead and we're going to X out of the panel we have open. And then we're going to left click on the top button to try to help it initiate. Left click, open up our contacts. And you notice our green gumball now showed up. As we go down, we can find Joe in here. Joseph Romano is how he's showing up. And we can send messages to him through here if we go over and left click on his name. And you notice it's the same panel for your regular contact messages. Go ahead and send Joe a message through Tech Chat. Hit send, and then we're going to close this out. If we close this box out when Joe replies, go ahead and close this out as well, Al. Once Joe replies, you're going to notice it'll show up in contacts rather on Tech Chat. Let's go back to the drop down arrow of Tech Chat. To the right. 
and you can view your profile from here and you also add contacts through here. All right, left click on the map to make it go away. And you'll see Joe responded to our attack chat and the messages showed up on the top there. Let's go ahead and open those out so we don't see the red two for the rest of the class. And now we're going to go back into settings. There's two other options I want to talk about for you in settings. You have tool preferences and control preferences. This is where you'll go in and customize each tool to how you want it to work for you. We ask that you use them on default for now until you learn the Wintac system. Then you can customize the tools to get the desired effect. Developer options, usually S6 or tech support, we'll go into that area. And we'll go back into the additional options menu. We move down to below settings to clear content and quit. Clear content will delete all imagery files, maps, certificates, everything out of WinTech. Only use this in case of emergency. Move down to quit. This is the proper way to quit WinTech and then relaunch it. That's also a troubleshooting step. If Windows uh, WinTech is not responding well for you, go ahead and quit the function and then open it back up. We'll left click on the map to make the menu go away. That completes the additional options menu. This time I want you to go in, find your call sign. If you need to make any adjustments, if you need a few more minutes to try to get your tax server up, go ahead and do so now. Now that additional options menu is finished, we're going to go to the home tab. Home tab is just to the right of the additional options. It should be default for whenever you're launching your WinTAC system. And below it are the tools we're going to talk about. The one we're going to start with is maps and favorites. If some of y'all didn't have a good map up to this point of the class, we're going to set that map up for you now. So left click on map and favorites, look, represented by a trifold in the toolbar. You're going to notice that we may have more uh, online map sources than you do. But when you look across the top of the map manager, you should have imagery, mobile, and favorites for tabs. We're going to start with the middle tab of mobile. So left click on mobile. And then I want you to make sure you're online. So right below favorites is online or local. If you see local, left click on it to make it go online. Now the map source we use most often in our area is Google Sat. For your area, go ahead and left click on a few of the different map sources there and find the one that best works for you. Later on, we'll be moving to a common operational picture. And we'll, uh, the, for where we're going, Google Sat will be the best map that we found. Now that you've seen some of your online map sources, let's go to the favorites tab on the right of mobile. This is a quick reference button for you so you can save different areas of the world that you're going to go and be working in quite often. and You can add them to your favorites. That way you don't have to pan across the continent to get to. Them. So we're going to go to uh, scroll around on the map itself, find something that looks interesting. All right, I found some farmland and behind a subdivision, and we're going to hit Add Current View. Then you need to enter a name for it and click OK. You notice this shortcut now shows up in your favorite tab. Go ahead and scroll away from that area, and then left click on subdivision to bring yourself back. At this time, go ahead and take a few seconds to create some more favorites. And then we'll move on back to the mobile tab. Your favorites have been set up. Let's left click on the mobile tab. And sometimes when we go to different areas of the uh, operation, we will not have online uh, network or Wi-Fi available to us. So we need to be able to cut maps prior to going into that area from an online source. If you go and left click on the cloud on the far left with the down arrow, 
This will allow us to cut maps from an online source. You have three options that descend. The first is a polygon region. This is a free form technique that you can do an exact outline. If you want to do an octagon shaped map, you could do so using this function. Below it is rectangle. That's the one we'll be using in a second. And at the bottom, you have select existing shape. If you had a drawing tool shape already plotted on the map and you want to use that shape to cut a map, you can do so using this option. Let's move to the second option and select rectangle. You got left click on the upper left hand corner of the map and right click on the lower right hand corner. I mean left click on the lower right hand corner of the map. You'll see your rectangles created and then the information for the map you're about to cut is showing up. Choose image view directory. This is where this map will save in the Windows program itself. A shortcut for this location should have been created when you downloaded WinTech. Choose tile set destination. We want a new tile set. Name layer name, our new layer name, and we're going to name this subdivision. Below the name, you're going to see a, a sliding bar with course and fine adjustments. The most important thing I want you to look at here is the bottom right hand corner of the tiles. The more tiles, the more detailed the map is going to be for you. For training purposes, we're going to try to leave this around anywhere from 200 to uh, 400 tiles. 430 is fine if you want to take it out to the right out. Now at the bottom left, you're going to click OK, and you're going to see the notification panel start tracking the download of the map. And in the map manager itself, you'll see it tracking at the bottom as well. If you select the red X, you can cancel the download. We try to use a low number of tiles so it doesn't take too long during training to download a map. Once your map is downloaded, your screen may temporarily blank out and then come back in. Now we can go into our local or offline file by left clicking on online. And you'll see uh, the map that you just created. So I was going to scroll down and find the map that he just created. It's at the bottom, subdivision SQLite. SQLite is the map format proprietary to tax systems. Anytime you cut a map, that's where you'll see at the end of it is that map format. Now, right now I'm at a certain level of zoom and only the maps available for that level of zoom in that area of the world I'm at will be available to me. If I want to see all of my offline maps, I'm going to left click on show all. And all the maps that I have available to me offline will show up. We're going to go back to the mobile tab and back online. Go ahead and left click on local. And we want to make sure we have a good map pulled up. We're going to stick with Google Sat. Close out the map tool. Next, we're going to use the go to tool to go to a common operational picture. So left click on the globe with the plus sign up in the toolbar. And the go to tool will pop up across the top are different coordinate systems that you can use. At the very end, you see address. If you enter in an actual street address and it's in the database, it will take you to that street address. However, we're going to stay with MGRS and we're going to enter in the grid of 16 Sierra Boxtrot Alpha. 89153-92126. Again, that was 92126. And we'll leave this grid up for you while we talk about the rest of the go to tool. To the right of your grid, you have an autofill function. If you were operating within the same grid zone, you could hit that in the 16 Sierra Foxtrot Alpha, which show up automatically for you. Elevation will skip over down in the bottom left. You see no point and a white dot and markers. We won't worry about the markers, but we will drop a white spot map. So left click on the white dot. The X will clear everything out so you can start over or you have the copy function to copy the grid and send in a message. But we're going to click OK in the bottom left. And this is going to take us to the Civic Center in Columbus, Georgia. Now, the white spot map dot doesn't stand out very good on that white roof. So let's go ahead and left click and bring up the radio menu. And the details page is off to the right. That's where we want to go. And we're just going to go in and change the color real quick and the name. So up at the top, we'll left click, name it Civic Center.
and come down to the color palette and select a color for me. I'll choose orange, and then we're going to close this panel out. Another function I want to show you of the Go To tool before we move on, we go back up and left click on the Go To tool. If I want another coordinate system to this location, now that I've entered it in one time and went to it, I can now select uh, Delta Mike there in the menu and lat long will come up for me and give me the lat long to that. Go ahead and hit X, close this out, and we're going to move on to the point dropper tool. Point dropper is represented by teardrop with the plus sign up in the toolbar. Left click to get the menu up on the right. And what you're seeing right now is Wintag just taking a little while to think, and that's fine. So at the very center, you have different menus that you can choose from. If you left click on that menu, you'll come to this marker here. And these are all the different palettes or menus you can choose from for objects. All the way at the bottom, you see the wasp icon. Yours may not have that. Once you go onto Watchtower and pull up the directions for downloading the WASP icons, you can do so there. But we're going to start with Spot Map, so let's left click on Spot Map. And we're going to scroll around on the map to kind of our northeast a little bit. We're going to find a series of buildings. And we want to label all of these buildings. So Spot Map is a great tool to do that. We're going to go and select a color. And we're going to add a prefix and index to it. So we're going to enter in alpha one. And now every time Al left clicks on the map, the spot map will drop as long as that orange spot map is highlighted on the right. And it will number it in sequence. Now, if we don't want the orange dots to show up, we only want the label. We'll go to the shoe tag on the far right. Left click and we'll label some buildings. Okay, we'll go over, we'll deselect it. So every time we touch the map, we won't continue to drop spot maps. But I want to go to Alpha One's radio menu. Now you saw how to change the name and the color earlier. On this radio menu, the new things you may see is a green flag. This is a navigation function or a quick nav. If I left click here, it's going to open up the Bloodhound tool to navigate me from my self marker to Alpha One. But we're going to go into the details page. And up at the top, we could change the name if we wanted to. We could change the color again. But right next to color is label only. So if we wanted to turn this spot map into just a label, we'd left click and it'll be label only. There's more information if you scroll down. But at the very bottom are send, a paper clip for attachment, and auto send. If I wanted to send this to a buddy, I would just left click on send. And I could bring up my contact list and go ahead and send this to him. But we want to move over to the paper clip. Left click on it to add an attachment. You'll see a folder pop up for Alpha One. We're going to check the plus sign. And image, video, or file, we're going to do a file. And our driver already has a file in place to send out. It's a PowerPoint presentation from Crosstop. I hit the X to close this page out. And you'll notice at the bottom of my details page for Alpha One, we now have an attachment. Anytime I send the spot map out now, it will have an attachment to it. To the right, you see auto send. You may also see broadcast and other menus. This will send this to everyone on the network anytime you uh, hit broadcast or auto send. It can clog up your network and also clutter up your display area if everyone's using auto send or broadcast. So we ask that you try to refrain from that and maintain good digital discipline. If I wanted to enter more information about Alpha One, when someone opened up the detail page, I could put something in remarks. And later on, you'll see we do that on other objects. Let's go ahead and close out Alpha One. And I want you to use the arrows left and right. This is another way you can scroll through the menus. But the fastest way that we normally use is just left clicking in the center to open up all the menus at once. So I want you to go through, look at Google, look at generic icons, Thema, Wasp, your defaults, and start dropping some uh, objects in the Civic Center area. We're going to start creating a plan. So from here on out, I don't want you to delete any of your markers that you drop unless you uh, made a mistake. And Al's going to be doing the same thing. So as you drop your markers, please watch along with Al, and he's going to start building a plan for us around the Civic Center.
Okay, you were watching along as Al was uh, starting to build a plan for us here. We're going to continue to add to this plan. The only thing I want to show you on Port Dropper before we move on to drawing tools is if you notice when you drop down where Al is right now, he has wasp icons. If you go down to the other black button just below it, you can left click in there and additional options will come up for you. So there's only one option in wasp. If we scroll over to another group, say generic, our theme is fine as well. We right click there and you'll see iron sights and ESF. And let's go into generic form real quick, Al. Generic has one of the biggest palettes that you can choose from. You can see you can choose different uh, menus with different objects inside of each menu. So these are sub menus located in your main menus. All right, let's X that out and close point dropper. And now we're going to focus on the drawing tool. So to the east of the Civic Center are baseball fields. We kind of want to center them in our GUI, zoom in a little bit. And your drawing tools are represented by a sheet of paper with a pencil on it. You have a drop down arrow, left click. You have four options. Polyline, rectangle, circle, and illustration. Polyline is a free form method. That's where you could outline a uh, octagon if you wanted to, like we talked about during map cutting. Telestration is freehand. Takes a little getting used to to use it. But we're going to focus on the circle and rectangle tool today. So left click on circle. We're going to drop the center of the circle right in the center of the baseball field. So left click in the center, then drag out. And to the edge of the outfields. Once you release, the manager for the circle will pop up on the right. And we're going to name this humanitarian aid. Just below it is your grid. Below the grid is the radius. If I wanted this to be 100 meters, I could adjust it. If I wanted it to be 1,000, I could adjust it. I can change it from meters to another unit if I like. I can add rings at each one of those increments. We don't need to add rings here, so we won't. And we can come down and change the color. We will change the color. And whichever color you think best fits the drawing tool that you're using, and then we're going to adjust the opacity or shading of that circle with the bar to the right. In remarks, we're going to put some information about this humanitarian aid site. We're going to put clothing, water, MREs, and miscellaneous. Then we'll hit the X. You've noticed as we hit the X, everything has been, all the information will auto save. Okay, we're going to go off to the east a little bit to the parking lots, and now we're going to use the rectangle drawing tool. And we're going to create a fuel depot. Once we get to the parking lot, we're going to go up and we're going to left click on the drawing tool and we're going to select rectangle and we'll start in the upper left hand corner of the parking lot and drag it down to the lower right hand corner of the parking lot. The manager for the rectangle will automatically pop up on the right. We're going to name this fuel depot. We're going to come down and select show labels, and this will let you know the size of the parking lot. And tactile overlay will give you different colored sides to each uh, side of the rectangle. We can change the color. And we can shade it in. Remarks, we may want to tell them what type of fuel is located at this fuel depot. So we're going to choose diesel. And then we're just going to X out to save all that information. Let's bring up the radial menu for the rectangle by clicking in the center. This radial menu, you notice we do a lot of things here that we were doing for the details page. 
one you may not be familiar with in this radio menu is the red triangle with the fence. This is geofence. Geofence is nothing more than a digital fence placed on a digital map that will track objects entering and leaving that area. So let's left click on geofence. We want to leave it tracking. For the trigger, we want entry and exit both. So we're going to select both. Monitor. I could only monitor TAC users coming in and out, but I, if anyone plots an icon in this area, I want to know about it also, so I'm going to hit all. Elevation we don't have to worry about, and we're going to go down and hit create. You'll notice in the notification panel lets you know that it's monitoring 18 items that are close to that geofence, so it's tracking those already. But we want to breach the geofence, so we're going to go back to our point dropper, left click on it. Go to FEMA, and we're going to drop a FEMA icon in there, and this should breach our geofence for us. You'll see the notification panel on the right pops up, and also another alert in the lower left-hand corner of the map. Left-click on that alert. And You'll see our geofence, the fuel depot alerts, has been breached, so it's colored red. If I want to see what breached it, I'm going to left click right in the center. And ESF 11 is what was dropped in there, that's what breached it. So I know the breach is there, I want to go ahead and disregard it. I'm going to hit the trash can. I'm going to select dismiss. If I were to select stop, I would actually turn the geofence off. So I'm going to hit dismiss, hit the back arrow, and now you'll see our geofence is green. If I want to quit monitoring the geofence, I'm going to go to the details page. And I'm going to turn it from tracking to off and select update at the bottom. And now it grays out. So red, green, and gray are the three colors you'll see in Geofence Manager. Go ahead and close out the geofence. And we're going to close out the point dropper. This time, go ahead and in this same area, use the drawing tool, make some new uh, shapes out there, add geofences to them, use the uh, point dropper to breach them, and work with the point dropper or the geofence manager. And while they're doing that, Al, if you can zoom out for us. The next thing we want to add to our plan are some routes. The routes tool is represented by a Z with a geo marker on it, or a Z with a geo marker on it. Let's left click on the routes tool. Your route manager will come up. You notice we don't have any routes created this time, so nothing's showing up in the main area of the panel there, so we need to create a route. We're going to hit the plus sign in the upper right hand corner, and we're going to start making a new route. First thing we want to do for this route is choose its color. Then we're going to enter in some administrative data for this route. We want to be driving, but you have the options of flying, walking, swimming, watercraft. And for the rest, we're going to stick everything with the defaults. So we'll choose infill over exfill, primary over secondary, and ascending over descending for the checkpoints. Left click on OK. And information is going to come across the toolbar. What it's telling you is if you right click, you're dropping a checkpoint. If you left click, you're going to drop a waypoint. Use your waypoints to keep your routes on track. Use your checkpoints to mark key intersections or buildings along the route that are important to the traveler. So Al's already created a uh, uh, quarantine area for us. He used the polyline uh, function of the drawing tool to create it. And we're going to create a route from the quarantine area up to the front of the Civic Center. And you'll notice as Al drops waypoints, they're represented by squares, checkpoints are represented by circles.
Okay, if Al would have messed up at any time along the route, you could have hit the undo function. But we are going to end editing because we're done creating the route. Over on the right, you'll see the details page for the route comes up. First thing we can do is rename the route, Route Orange. We move down below Route Orange, and we're going to see checkpoint one through four. We want to look to the right of checkpoint one. That's the distance between checkpoint one and the start point. Just to the right of the distance is an empty black box. Left click on that black box. Here we can add our cues. We can free text a cue in, or we can choose from the palette on the left. We're going to choose slow down, which is in the bottom right hand corner. And we're going to click OK. Now, anytime someone comes up to checkpoint two who's traveling a route, we'll get the cue or warning to slow down. If we move up to the top, we'll see that we can send this route to a TAC contact. We can export it out of WinTAC or we could edit it. What we want to do is edit. So we're going to left click on the pencil. And we're going to go to checkpoint one. Uh, we can adjust the route by grabbing the route and making small adjustments. You can also grab the checkpoints or the waypoints and drag them as well. But for now, let's left click on checkpoint one because you can bring up a radio menu for both checkpoints and waypoints. I can adjust this checkpoint using the go to tool. I can do a polar plot if I select the plus sign. I can fine tune adjust, I can delete it, or I have a comment bubble there. This was meant to allow you to add cues to the uh, checkpoint. However, uh, this functionality is not operational at this time through the radio menu, but I can delete this uh, checkpoint. So let's go ahead and delete it. Let's move up to the next waypoint and left click on its radio menu. Similar options are available here with the exception of the circle in the one o'clock position. And I'm going to left click on the circle and turn the waypoint into a checkpoint. So this is now our new checkpoint one. This time, go ahead and interact with your route, do some editing on it. Once you're done editing, go ahead and hit the X in the upper left hand corner to end editing. To the right of the pencil, you have an elevation tool that's not that has no functionality at this time. To the right, you have a gear. Anytime you see this gear show up, it'll take you to the manager for that tool and allow you to customize the settings under your tool preferences. But what we're going to do is go ahead and hit the X to close out the detail page for the route. And you're going to see route orange now shows up in the route manager. To the right, you could go back into the details page. You could use the flag to start navigation since we're on a uh, desktop that doesn't have a internal gps this won't have a lot of functionality for us however when we send this route out to atac sev devices it will bring up a navigation system unique to route tool itself any other time you navigate inside wintac or atac it will be the bloodhound tool to the right we could edit again or we could trash this route to the far left you can turn this route on and off as you wish to view it this time, I want you to go ahead and create your own routes in this area. If you want to watch along, Al is going to create an emergency vehicle only route. If you're watching along with Al this time, you'll notice on the second route we created, the R did not go away. That's a little glitch in the system. All you have to do is start entering text. Then you can arrow over and delete the R. All right, I'll go ahead and close out the route.
and you'll see our emergency vehicle route has showed up in the routes manager tool. We're going to close out routes for now. And zoom out a little so we can see all of the graphics that we've laid on the map. And you're going to find times when you don't want to see all the graphics that are being displayed. It can clutter up your screen. So in Overlay Manager, we can go and hide and view graphics as we wish to. So left click on the three sheets of paper that are falling on top of one another up in the toolbar. And you'll see your Overlay Manager comes up on the left side of the screen. All your markers and objects that you drop on the map are divided up into different categories inside the Overlay Manager. The first category we're going to go into is Team. This controls how I view all of my team members. So for example, if I no longer wanted to see the orange team, I could come down here and left click on the green bubble and orange team would be hidden. So they're not deleted, but they are hidden for my view on my map display. But we wanna leave orange team on because this is also another troubleshooting step. If you're trying to see people on your uh, common operational picture that you can't see, check here first to make sure you're not hiding them from yourselves. Hit the back arrow. And it's to take a time for you to work with the overlay manager to keep opening up all these different categories and seeing exactly what's being saved where. Most of your markers are gonna be in this category here. As you go down, routes will be under navigation. Your drawing tools will be under shapes. And we're gonna to come to other overlays. Left click here. And this is where I have my off-screen indicators turned on. So if you look up in the northeast of my map area, you're gonna see this marker here. That's an off-screen indicator. If I was to click on that off-screen indicator, it would take me to that location, but I like to know what's around me, so I leave them on. So as you see out, click on the green gumball there, he'll be turning those off-screen indicators off and on. Just above it are grid lines. Some people like having grid lines on the map at all times. So grid lines will be superimposed over your screen there. However, I like leaving them off, so we're gonna leave them off for the, uh, the classroom purposes. Let's left click. The other thing you can do in Overlay Manager is actually delete objects that you no longer need. So if you look up to the right of the Pac-Man ghost at the top, you have a multi-selection tool. Left click on the multi-selection tool. Now from this screen, I could delete everything on my display if I wanted by selecting all. But we want to build a data package in a minute, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go into markers, left click in the center to drill into markers. And we're going to go with icons. Left click in the center. And that ESF I used to breach the geofence at the very bottom there, that's the item I'm going to delete. I'm going to come up to the top and hit the trash can. And again, I have the select all option in the screen if I wished. And yes, we want to permanently remove this item. Let's go ahead and close out the overlay manager tool. And I'm going to show you another way you can delete items using the lasso tool. The very top next to overlays, you're going to see a button with two parts. If I left click on the top part, I could trace around all the icons I want to add. At the very bottom, you have a drop down arrow. Let's left click on it. And I have the eclipse select or rectangle select. We're going to use rectangle select and we're going to delete the spot maps we created on the buildings earlier. So select this, go over to those spot maps. You can zoom in and zoom out as you need to to be more precise. And you just drag the rectangle across and once you release, it's going to bring up your overlay manager tool again and let you know what items you selected. You see they're inside markers. And we go up and hit the trash can at the top. And we hit yes. And now those spot maps that we dropped earlier are gone. Take a second, work with the overlay manager, turn on and off your objects as needed, delete a few, but remember to leave enough on. We're creating a data package later. The last tool we're going to cover on the home tab is going to be our data package. If you look to the right of contacts, you will see an open box. That's where you create a data package. So left click on the open box. If we had any data packages in the system, they would be stored here in the main panel. 
up at the top, you can import from a tax server. You can create a data package. You can view the logs, or you can go into your folders. We're going to create a data package, so we're going to left click on the plus sign, and we're going to name it. Naming convention is very important here for classroom purposes. We're going to keep it simple and name it Civic Center. Once we enter the name, if we wanted to quickly send a file using the data package, we could hit quick send, but we want to build one, so we're going to select build. Now we've created the data package, we have to add stuff to it. So we're going over to the pencil to the right. Left click, it'll give you four options. Add a single map item. I can enter one object at a time by left clicking on it on the map. You, I can use the lasso tool, which we'll do in a minute. I can add items from Overlay Manager. So that will open up Overlay Manager and you can select what you want to add to your data package there. Or I can add files. So I could go back into my Windows files and add uh, PowerPoint slides, images, op orders, whatever I need to enter in here. But we're going to choose Lasso Tool. So left click on Lasso Tool. And you may want to zoom out a little bit to be able to get everything in there. And we're just going to trace around everything we've entered in so far. Once you release, all those items will be added to that data package. And you can scroll down to see the items. Or if you don't wish to see the items, hit the drop down arrow on the left, and it will hide those back into the data package. You can turn the data package on and off by checking visible. Or I can send this data package to a friend. So we're going to go over and we're going to left click. You're going to have two options, TAC contact or TAC server. We don't want to hang training materials on the TAC server. They can clutter them up. So we want to send it to a TAC, a TAC contact. So we're going to left click on that. We're going to send this out to Joe. If you know any other people that are on right now, you can send your data package to them as well. We're going to hit send and notification panel. You'll track the progress of your data package going out. Now, if we want to download a data package that has been added to a tax server, we can go up to the cloud next to the plus sign, left click on it. And if the server's online, it's going to tell me all the data packages I have available for download. And as we scroll through, you notice there's quite a few data packages that have been added to the uh, tax server itself. And we're going to find one that's nice and small. So that route one with 1.5 kilobytes right there, we're going to left click next to that on 23 April. So we left click on that route one and hit OK. And the data package should generate inside of the data packages here. It may have been too small to go through. But we're going to move on. The tax server may be having maintenance done to it right now. But if the data package did show up, we would open it up here by hitting the drop down arrow. So left click here. We're going to pretend that Civic Center is the new data package we downloaded. We're going to go over here and left click on the map and drag it away from our current location. Go ahead and left click over on the map, drag us away from our current location. And sometimes when you download a data package, you don't always know where that data package was created in the world. So just open it up and go hit a center on button to one of the icons and it'll take you to the area that data package was created. So it's a nice quick cheat to be able to find out where it is real quick. All right, this time I want you to go ahead and continue to build your data packages, uh, use the various options available to you, and send them out to your buddies. And then we'll come back and start talking about the rest of the tabs across the toolbar. So if you go ahead and close this out for us. Creating and sending a data package was the culminating event for the home tab. The other tabs we're briefly going to talk about. We're going to start with the digital pointer tab. You have digital pointer one, two, and three. When you drop these digital pointers, they will auto broadcast to everyone on the network. So it's important to exercise digital discipline here. If everyone on the network is dropping digital pointers everywhere, you're going to clutter your system up very quickly. 
So once you left click on digital pointer one, you'll see a red gumball. This is letting you know that this tool is dynamic at this time. So anywhere I left click, that digital pointer will move. So Al's gonna left click a couple times on the screen, move that digital pointer around. And as that digital pointer gets dropped, it's auto broadcasting across the network. To go ahead and lock it in place, left click on DP1 again. And now that digital pointer is locked in place. To turn it off, I wanna go up and right click on DP1. All right, moving on to plugins. Various plugins are located in the plugins tab. You see all the ones we had turned in earlier through additional options menu. X check is going to be one you want to work with quite a bit. It creates a digital checklist and saves it to the tax server for other users to come on and check off progress as you move through your operation. Range and bearing tool. We only have two options available for you in here because they're the only two we're talking about in the class. We have dynamic measure and static measure. We're gonna left click on dynamic measure. We're gonna to go to the civic center and we're gonna draw a range and bearing line from the civic center back windows out across the uh, river into Phoenix City, Alabama. We're gonna create, uh, create a field of view here. So once we drop that first range of bearing line, we call it dynamic because it's easy to interact with. You have a circle on each end. You can make small adjustments by just grabbing it. We can also bring up the radial menu. And once we get the uh, range of bearing line where we want, we'll left click and we'll open up the radial menu. Most of these portion of the radial menu is pretty self-explanatory, except maybe the thumbtack or the pin. We're gonna left click on the pin. It's gonna lock that current range and bearing line in place. And it's gonna create a new one directly over the top of it. So we're gonna grab that new range of bearing line and slide it off to the right to create a, a, a range of fire, a range of view for us. Left click in the center. Pin the second one, and a third one will be created. We're not going to pin the third one, so we're just going to drag it off, and we're going to left-click on dynamic measure, and it will go away automatically. For the static measure, it's not as interactive as the dynamic. We're going to put it on the east side of the Civic Center. We're going to drag it out to one of the buildings nearby. Now, once we release that line, you notice the circles aren't there, so we can't just grab it and go as we want. Now you can right click on the tip of it and then left click somewhere else on the map to move it. And, or you can pull up the radio menu for it. As you see Al go up and try to pull up the radio menu, he'll left click on the arrow. Go ahead and left click off the screen again. You grabbed the wrong thing. All right, so we have a selection. Do we want to pull up the emergency vehicle route or the range of bearing? Anytime you have multiple objects in the same area, you'll, the WinTAC will ask you which radial menu do you want to open. We want to open the range of bearing. Okay, you see the additional options menu there again, or the radial menu. We can go over and left click on the pencil. And we have our range of bearing lines information there, and we can adjust it as we need to. But we're just going to hit cancel because we don't need to move it at this time. Range and bearing was the last tab we're covering in the Windows 4.0 civilian tools and functionality. Please see your Watchtower website for more videos and for information on how-to manuals and downloads.